This video is very, very, very important. So I would take notes. I'm going to try to make it really, really simple, but it's a very important concept. You may have watched other videos with parts of this information, but I wanted to create one video just to explain everything. Okay. So what we're talking about is how to prevent someone from going from a pre-diabetic state to a diabetic state. Now, the difference between prediabetes and diabetes has to do with your blood sugars. So in prediabetes, your blood sugars are around 100 to 125. Diabetes, it's 126 and greater. We're talking about another test called A1C, which is an average of three months of your blood sugars. We're dealing with a 5.7 to a 6.4 with prediabetes. And then once you're diabetic, it becomes 6.5 or greater. So really, when we're talking about diabetes type 2, we're just talking about the elevation of sugar in your blood. A normal blood sugar should be about 80, okay? And what that means is you have about a teaspoon of sugar in all of your blood, okay? So it's not that much. And you don't need to consume a teaspoon of sugar to get that. Your body will make its own sugar out of fat, out of other types of calories, okay? So that's what prediabetes is. That's what diabetes is. Now, what happens is this. An average person consumes about 31 teaspoons of sugar every single day. And I'm talking about the other carbohydrates that can turn into sugar as well. It's not all just teaspoons of sugar. So they're consuming a lot of carbs. Roughly it could be around, I don't know, 300 grams or even more for the average American. So that's crazy amounts of sugar. Now, look at this. A normal blood sugar is only one teaspoon of sugar. Over here, we've got 31 teaspoons. So why is it when someone consumes a lot of sugar, the average American, why isn't the blood sugar just screaming high all over the place? Usually it's normal, at least for a period of time. Well, that is because we have this filter right in the middle of this thing. And it has to do with this machine that keeps the sugar out of the blood. And it's called insulin. So insulin kind of filters out and gets rid of the excess amount of sugar in the blood. And what does it do with it? It hides it. It'll put it in stored sugar called glycogen in the liver and the muscles. It will also put excess in the fat. It will convert some to cholesterol but the thing that the body doesn't want is high amounts of sugar in the blood. Why? Because that sugar is very, very dangerous to the lining of the arteries. It will start to corrode and it's called oxidation or damage the inside of the arteries. And then comes the placking and the calcium and that whole thing. So your body really considers excess sugar very, very dangerous. If this person is consuming a lot of carbohydrates and has a high frequency of eating, having a lot of snacks, what happens is you're going to get a huge amount of insulin being released from the pancreas. And that insulin is working really, really hard to keep the sugar down. But here's the other thing. High levels of insulin is also very toxic to the body as well. So your body doesn't like high amounts of sugar or high amounts of insulin. So what does it do? It starts to reduce the insulin by creating a resistance. Okay, it's called insulin resistance. So the cells start blocking insulin like crazy. The problem is the body still has to keep this under control. So it starts to turn up the dial and produce more and more insulin to penetrate through this resistance to keep the sugar at a normal level. And this whole game continues for a period of 10 to 15 years. So you may have insulin resistance for 10 to 15 years until all of a sudden this pancreas says, you know what? It's been compensating. It's been working hard to kind of counter this problem to help you, but now it's exhausted. So the pancreas could no longer pump out that much insulin. So this starts going down and down. Now we don't have as much insulin. Well, guess what's going to happen? If you keep consuming this amount of carb at this frequency, the sugar is going to start to go up. Why? Because our insulin is going down, so the sugar is going to start going up. Over time, 
it's going to then turn into full-blown diabetes. Now, understanding this problem is so important if you are a pre-diabetic or even you have insulin resistance because it's so easy to solve with just a little bit of effort, you can avoid this whole thing. And it really has to do with cutting out the carbs and going on intermittent fasting. Now, the other thing that I want to tell you is very, very interesting. The doctors are focused on the blood sugars only. They're not measuring your fasting insulin level. They're not measuring if you have insulin resistance. The test that you would do to determine that would be HOMA IR, okay? But that's never done. So this area is kind of hidden. This is the area that you see. This happens later in life. This happens way before. 90% of people that are pre-diabetics don't even know they're pre-diabetics. They just wake up one day and they're a diabetic. Now, I would say probably 99% of the people don't know they have insulin resistance. Now, I'm going to tell you right now the symptoms to determine if you have insulin resistance, even without taking this test, okay? All you have to do right now is just look down and see if you see your belly. If you see your belly and you can't see your, your feet, then we know you have insulin resistance. Here are some other symptoms. Frequent urination, even at night. Are you getting up through the night and urinating? This is what you have. If you were just to change your diet, you would notice this symptom improving within a few days. Brain fog, memory problems, because your brain is dependent on this glucose and when you have resistance, guess what? You starve the neurons with its fuel and you start becoming forgetful. It's the start of dementia. But when you cut out the carbs, you'll be running your body on ketones and you can bypass that whole thing and feed your brain and you'll actually have a lot more focus and less memory problems. But here's the big symptom right here to know that you have insulin resistance. You cannot go a long period of time without getting hungry. You need a snack between meals. You need a snack at night. This is probably the big one. Craving for carbs is a big one, or chips or some type of cracker, especially at night, is a big symptom. Tired after eating. You want to take a nap after your lunchtime. We know you have insulin resistance. Tingling in the feet or burning in the feet or any type of sensation in the hands or the feet is right in this area right here. It could be this area too. That means that your blood sugars are destroying the vascular system, the capillaries to the nerves in your feet. That's called peripheral neuropathy. Very, 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 very simple to fix. All you do is you get off the high carb diet, stop eating so frequent. I put some links down below of how to do this. And just so you know, sugar is very oxidating and it creates a lot of inflammation. And the inflammation actually even makes this worse. It actually can push you from here to here, just having the inflammation. Also, omega-6 fatty acids, like in all the different oils, soy oil, corn oil, cottonseed, canola oil, those are very highly inflammatory. That can also push you over the edge, as well as MSG, like monosodium glutamate. It's in a lot of fast food restaurants. Anyway, I gave you a lot of information. I hope you now have a deeper understanding of really how simple this concept is. Thanks for watching. So if you're enjoying this content, go ahead and share it with someone that could really benefit from it.